Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is breaking down some of the results from dyno session number two with the dyno mule. And for those that are new to my channel or unfamiliar, the dyno mule is a 406 small block Chevy that I had built, 11 to compression ratio, runs on pump gas with a splash of 110 just to be safe. It's got a AFR Enforcer 195 heads on it. They're as cast, completely stock. It's got an Urson all roller cam with a 260 to 70 degrees of duration. 680 lift, runs a 1,000 CFM carburetor, and we just play with it on the dyno pretty much. So, uh, if you're not, but in the previous session, I had these books printed, so they are still available. So I know it's hard to see some of the numbers on YouTube, but I totally understand that. Um, these old, the books from version one, so the first dyno session is available, it's 38 bucks. I'm gonna do another book like this for session two. So the numbers you see here, they'll be made into a book too. It just, I haven't got it all finished up yet. And I'll give a discount for the guys that bought uh, the first book. If you haven't, obviously it would cost more. But we'll talk about the numbers today and we'll talk about everything. Okay, so a little preamble on this and I'll make it real quick. The first dyno session was about six weeks ago and the weather conditions were dramatically different. So we left a regular intake. Uh, the intake we left on it was the same one we ran before. And when we dynoed it, for the, to start the second session, it was down. So when you look at the numbers, you have to remember that from session to session, the numbers were down. Nothing was wrong with the engine that we could find so far. Although I don't think there really is anything. It just, the weather conditions, and even though the dyno corrects for it, it can't correct uh, what the engine wants. So it just assumes what the engine wants. Point being is, if you're comparing these dyno numbers from session one, they, it, you, it's harder to do because Everything in this was already down just from the air. So, but we'll compare those anyway, just to give you some ideas. Let's get to it. So AFR was kind enough to donate um, intake to start off with. They have donated this one, an AFR 4811. That's the part number for this one. It's the same height as a Super Victor. And on the first dyno session, we dynoed it just like this. This is exactly how it looked. It was as cast. Nothing had been modified. It's not port matched. It's exactly like it is. So on session two, what we wanted to see is what happens when you remove the clover leaf. So it looks like this. And that's all I done is I cut out the clover leaf and I just kind of blended it so it wouldn't look so hideous. And then this one was for a customer. So he, I had to port this intake for him, same intake, but I will say this is version two and this is version three. You're like, oh my gosh, that's not fair. I, it's just found, it just cast at a different foundry and this casting itself is a little bit smoother, but it doesn't matter when you port it. So anyway, um, I ported this for his 421 with, and he is putting them on a set of AFR 220s. So it's gasket matched to an AFR 220, which none of the rest are. They're all stock, which is smaller than what the head is. This one obviously is bigger because that head port opening is bigger, but it's fully ported, but it's not ported for the engine, the dyno mill. The guy just said, yeah, just try it on the dyno, see what it used. The other thing is you're like, wow, that looks really shiny. He's EFI. So what's gonna happen now with this one, Just for your reference, he's having it sent off or I'm sending it off to Induction Solutions. They're gonna put um, EFI bungs in it and he's gonna run a throttle plate up here. So there won't be any carburetor on it, but we did dyno test it obviously with the carburetor. So anyway, that's the intakes. All of them were tested with this four hole taper spacer from AFR. And I have to say of all the spacers I've ever used, this one's probably been the best one that's ever showed any results really over doing it in a one inch open, period. None of the rest have. AFR's not paying me to say this. They didn't even give me this spacer. But as far as spacers goes, this is probably one of the cheapest tapered one you could buy. I think they're like 50 bucks. It's phenomenally cheap. And I'm telling you, it's the only one I've ever seen gain what this one does. This one actually gained 10 horsepower over an open. I've never seen that before. Usually, you'll be lucky if you can get eight and you'll spend $200 on a spacer. So again, they're not paying me to say this. I'm being straight up honest with you. This thing worked, but it was tested on everything. So just letting you know. So one of the questions I really wanna know is what happened when we went from this Clover leaf to this. So let me get the results. Okay. Here we have this is uh, the clover leaf, clover leaf removed, and it still made um, 546 horsepower. And remember, as I said before, the dyno numbers are lower because the engine was lower this day. So anyway, 546 horsepower, not bad. And looks like it says. You can ignore this, by the way. I know it says 539 torque. That's not real. That's just the way the dyno loads it. 
really you're in a 527 ish so ignore that one that's not real but anyway uh let's see how it compares so we had a graph printed and remember take this with a grain of salt two different dyno sessions but we can see hopefully if my fingers can grab it of course they can't here we go this is what happened with the so here we go with the red one red line right here is the clover leaf removed the black line is stock so you can kind of see what happened. Now, granted, it's two different dyno sessions, so it's really hard to see. So the only thing I can say is you could tell it looks like it, it gained some when we roll in, which is a little strange. And then it lost some, It lost pretty much everywhere else. So from, let's see, 46, 47, looks like 4,800 on, it was a loss. It didn't gain, obviously, and the power is worse. So, um, however, Judging by the two dyno sessions, I would say it's probably a wash. If I could have done this on the same day, they'd probably been within uh, probably two or so horsepower because that one made 554 and this one was 546. So it's still, I mean, looks like it's down about 10 almost. But on the same session, because remember I said we had some single planes that lost 10, the baseline that we used. It lost more than 10 actually. So, but anyway, point being is I think it's a wash. If anything, it's lower, but it's that's what is is what it is. So if you're curious to know and you're like, this is what it is from two different dyno sessions, same engine, just different air conditions, this is what we have. So I would say from my own personal experience, though, I think it's the same or worse, but not by much. It's not killing it, but it's also not helping it. So anyway, there's that. Let's go on to what the fully ported one did. So the, here's our obviously fully ported one. This was 559 horsepower and actually almost 560 right there. And the torque is 529.3. So pretty good gain there. I mean, it's pretty good. So here's something interesting, just a little bonus knowledge for you. So we would make several pulls on each intake manifold because you can't just do it off the first one because I learned this. When we, we were switching manifolds really quick, about 17 minutes. So what happens is the oil is still up to temp, so it's still pretty warm, but the intake itself is at room temperature. So your first pull, when you bolt it on, we dumped all the water, so cool water is running in here. So it's like 60, 70 degree water. The head itself still warm somewhat, and, but when the cool water run, goes in, it's cooling the head. The intake itself is at room temperature. Um, so on your very first pull you'd make, they'd be outstanding numbers because you got a lot of things going for you. You got warm oil, you got a, the coolest intake charge you're probably ever going to get. So, but you can't use that one. It's, it's not fair. You can't compare an intake that way. So what we do is we do another pull and by that point, the intake's actually up to temp. Like you could tell it's definitely warm. We have the oil temperatures the same or warmer than what it was in the first pull, but it's closer together. The, the also the water temperature as far as in the head. And the manifold itself was um, uh, closer, so they're all the same that way. So usually between two and three pools, we would have all the water and oil temperatures the same, and the intake itself was actually warmed up. So what you're looking at is the second intake run, is this one. So, but here's what we did. We wanted to see also, we'd make another pool just to make sure it was kind of backing up. Now this is interesting for you guys. This is we the same, thing we just got it a little bit hotter so at this point the oil temperature is actually hotter than what the rest are so the oil is actually thinner but here's the catch the intake itself the water temperature is much warmer like in the 170s 180 range um and you get these numbers so if you look how much power is lost just because of the hotter water temperature here's an interesting point though the torque's always up almost because look at this we have 429 point or 529.3 look at this one 530.3, it's one, one foot pound of torque up. You might say, why? The oil temperature, when it gets hotter, that oil gets thinner, it's actually less power to turn the pump. So typically your torque comes up, but because of the higher air temperature, your horsepower comes down and it came down a bunch. Look at 559 to a 553. That's all from air temperature. Now, why do I say that? Think about that clover leaf being removed. That thing, it altered it maybe, looks like about eight horsepower about. You warming your intake charge changes that much. That's why it's so hard to do these tests because you gotta get the intake temperatures that close to the same.
I mean, that's just a little bonus knowledge for you. But let's go on and show you some other stuff. This is the stock, which is this intake. So I'll move papers, I guess, so you can see it again. This is the stock intake versus the ported intake. That's this one. Now, granted, two different dyno sessions, but remember, this dyno session that this one was ran on was the one where there, it was down on power anyway because of the air, but it's definitely better. Look how much better it is. Um, I mean, 559, I think I made 551 before. So it, it's better. It's considerably better. Now, I know you're thinking, shoot, there's no way that's worth that much money. I mean, how much you charge? I'm not gonna tell you in the video because it could change from the uh, time you watch it. But yeah, it's expensive to get it this ported. And you're like, it didn't gain that much. Well, here's something to think about. At the track, if you're in the 4,900 to 6,500 RPM range, even though it looks like it doesn't gain much, you're actually gaining a lot of ET from that because you're making more power through the entire band, not just one point. So there's something. By the way, people think that the ported intakes lose power, but um, down low, but look at this, it gained. It gained at the lower RPMs, not lost, gained. So you're like, no, nah, it's gonna make it a dog down low. No, that's a fa fallacy, it gains a lot. So, but um, back to what I was saying, it doesn't look like it gained that much, but you're still gonna go faster on the track. But here's the other major part to this. The head, the intake's only gonna do what the heads will allow it to do. It's not gonna make the heads phenomenally better. So in the case that we have with the Dyno Mule, it's just AFR enforcer heads. They only flow like 270, um, I think actually like 265 and stuff. They're not that great. I mean, they're good, but they're not fantastic. This intake is not, the, is not your bottleneck. The heads are. So maybe stock it might have been, but once you've ported it, you've far exceeded it, and you only need mild work to get to match the flow of that head. Don't get me wrong, we can talk about runner cross-section and all that, but the point being is that head's only going to move so much air. What intake you on it? As long as it's moving the same amount of air, then it becomes runner length, taper, and all that becomes important. They get more power out of it. This thing's outpacing that head. If we switch, which will happen on the mule, to a better flowing head, then this intake will shine far more, and those differences will grow because no longer will the intake um, or the heads be the restriction. It will be the intake, and then we'll see the differences. Something to think about. Now, in case you're wondering just how bad the air was, check this out. These are measured numbers. This is that same graph. So this is the ported versus non. This is the measured. This is not corrected. So if you looked, the measured power from the first session with the stock AFR versus the ported one with the um, AFR intake, it's down. This is measured power. Remember, we correct from the weather, and that's your corrected numbers. This proves how much worse the air was. So even though corrected, it's making more. The uncorrected power because of the crap air, I think it's like 1,500 uh, feet worse of air, it's down. Something else to give you. Now this is the last one. Um, this is comparing the same, this is, this probably won't be in the book, this one, because I pulled the wrong numbers. I pulled like the first one on each one of these. So the first run of the Cloverleaf being machined out versus the first run of this ported one. So the numbers look really great. See what I mean by the torque? That's actually like a little kick up there. But this is this one versus this on the same day. So how much more does the ported one make versus having the cloverleaf cut out? That much. And that's a lot everywhere. So ignore that little jump there. That's just the way the dyno loaded. But yeah, it's better everywhere um, versus just doing that. So, and that really makes me think if I had a stock one on here, maybe you put that line a little bit here um, on the same day, I think the differences would have been even more. So, but anyway, there's some stuff to you guys to think about. I appreciate you watching. If you're interested in get the version two of the book or even version one, um, just email me at winegardnerracing at gmail.com and I'll put your name on the list for version two. And if you want version one of the book, I will just send you the link so you can go to my store and buy it. But anyway, Guys, remember, I know Superman. You guys take care.